This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So this is going to be probably more towards geared toward uh, maybe beginner, intermediate. This is for people who cl- who have clients who want to customize their own websites, which is something I came across a lot. So the Divi theme. Does anyone else have accounts with elegant themes? Um, does anyone else use that stuff? Okay, cool. Uh, so, if you're not familiar, Elegant Themes is service, a package deal. Uh, it's very affordable. It's, what is it now, $89 a year. And you get a package of 87 themes. One of them includes DV, which is seriously the only theme I've really used in the past few years. Um, and most of my freelance clients are just smaller uh, they want something to build themselves. A lot of them are artists, musicians, uh, have small businesses. Uh, so this is something that would be very helpful if someone wants something quick in a month, even less, and you don't feel like dealing with it and want to do something really fast and get it done. Uh, so let's see where I can start. Um, I guess I was going to play you guys a little demo video they have because it's kind of cute. Divi is a new kind of theme. It's smart, flexible, and built on a foundation of powerful features that give you back the creative control over your website. Design elements are broken down into building blocks that can be customized and arranged in any number of ways. Using Divi's drag and drop builder, anyone can easily create the perfect website for their needs. Not only is Divi flexible, it's beautiful too. The layouts you create will look perfect on every device. No matter how you use it, and no matter how you view it, your website is going to look great. Whether you're building an online portfolio, an e-commerce storefront, or a new online home for your business, Divi has what you need to make your vision a reality. Combine that with a little bit of imagination, and the possibilities are countless. Smart. Flexible. Beautiful. That's Divi. Pretty hardcore, right? So let me give you a little background on myself. My name is Megan Champa. I've been a web developer for about a decade now. Um, I had my own business for eight years. I currently work as a developer for TripAdvisor over at the headquarters in Needham. Um, but I still take care of my clients. And uh, have any of you used this theme before? I know one of you has. Awesome. All right, cool. So I kind of took a little bit of break. So I, I have a little bit of background to the new, what is it? What are they on, 2.4? Is it 4.2 now? Anybody? Okay. Mm. So I think this one is... So I've been using this since it came out. Um, maybe two or three years ago. And so to show you guys... I'll show you guys who are not familiar with this. Um, so this is my example. And this website probably took me a couple days to build. Um, because, you know, we all want to spend as much time as we can on our portfolios. Uh, so you just get a general what you need. And the best thing about this is it's responsive, built in with the modules. Um, let me find a better one. Stuff like this. And so the way that it looks in the back end. So today I just built a very basic site that I think would be fun if we played with and checked out kind of some of the features I wanted to show you guys. And if you guys also have any unique problems that, you're, that you want to have done, like want to build really fast, um, if you have a website for a client who maybe just wants like a little four page, five page site that just has information about their business or who they are, what they do, do you guys have that come up often where someone's just like, I want a web presence? Have we had this problem before? Yes, no, maybe? I have. So, <laughs> so this is a site that I built today. Uh, it's called Every Band in Boston. So this was going to be kind of uh, a showcase about local bands, what they do, maybe little portfolios, a few decks or anything else. Um, so this would be, you know, the homepage, basic stuff. You get some parallax action going on if you guys are still into that. Counter, moving. So in the back end, this is what it looks like. So, 
So instead of seeing the WYSIWYG editor or something else, um, you have these blocks, modules. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so if you look back over here, you can kind of see how this has been built. So we have the image over here, text, call to action button, and they're all just kind of fitted in there, kind of like Legos on top of each other. And then you go back to the side, you can kind of see how it's built. You get the image over there on the left, you get some text, call to action button, even has a little animation built into it. Um, so in order to put these modules in here, it's very simple. You just go to insert module, click it, and then you get uh, all the different features that DB has. Um, again, which are pretty self-explanatory. Some of them are a little excessive. Uh, you know, I don't know if bar counters are still cool now, or counters, uh, stuff like that, but they're still kind of neat if you have some, again, you have a client who wants to show general information about themselves or their services. Uh, so, let me see. So the image one is pretty interesting. So all it is is you upload an image to the library, as you usually do in WordPress, and then you have a bunch of other options. Um, you can open in a light box if you still want to do that. Um, you can edit the animation without having to go into the CSS, and you can if you want to. Um, and so you have different uh, different ways to animate it, which makes it look very beautiful, and it also works uh, responsibly, which is really cool, and it's very easy. So say I just wanted to change my animation to fade in. It takes two seconds. Change that. Let's update it. Go back over here. And then you see uh, you kind of have the fade in effect instead of the back and forth, which is pretty neat. Um, and again, the same. You can have full width sections, stack sections. Um, I think it'd be cool if we just kind of built one right now after this contact us part. So we're going to go with something simple. Uh, we'll call it. So I'll just show you each one of these. So the standard section, so it comes with columns, which you can also use short codes for if you want to use the WYSIWYG down the line. Um, you can just use a text or just use code editor and just put in your custom stuff if you want to do that. Or if you're in a rush and just want to get some columns in there with images and some text, you can just do this. So let's just do half and half. So you get this blank thing, two columns, and your modules. We're going to go here. And we're going to do, I don't know, is there anything you guys want to see in particular? Anything cool? Yes? Sure. Okay. Okay, so you wanted to, how about this? I'll show you this then. So let's get out of the standard column. So they also have this section called specialty section. Is this something that you were looking for? So instead of just, yeah, having like a grid-based column, you could do something like this. So let's do something weird, we'll do this one. Um, so this kind of builds like columns within the columns. So in here, instead of just having that one section, you could do half and half or a full width um, to have that kind of design built. In here, let's do, we'll just upload another image. Why not? Uh, let's look at the animation. Let's see. Insert module. Uh, I don't really have much set up over here. The text. So in here you do have your text editor. And again in here, these are short codes where you can create columns. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with this stuff here. Um, so I, I don't want to go into that. It might get kind of weird. So I'll just take some cupcake and some. Put it over. That's my favorite one. That's appropriate for a meetup. Almost like Samuel Jackson or some. Uh, so what else? Uh, I'll just do another thing of text. I just want to kind of show you guys how quickly this goes about. I'll update that. Go back to my site. I took what five minutes. You go down, and there you have 
everything looks good. So one of the new features of Divi that I saw in the newest, um, newest one was there are advanced um, there are advanced settings for design. So before, when I first started using this, I had to go into the CSS usually and make classes and customize it, which is good practice. But again, if this is like a simple project, you want to get out fast. Or if you want the client to be like, oh, you know, I do want the font a little bit more. And it's like, come on, like, let's, we don't want to have to do this anymore. You know what I mean? So you can, you, know, you can go in there and you can change the font yourself. This is your website now. Like, I'm sure we have all the clients like that, which are wonderful. So this gives, you know, it's a pretty <laughs> expo simple, explanatory way to edit all this stuff. So say I wanted the font size to be 43. What the hell? And then you can also change the font, which is fun. So let's just do something kind of normal. Here, uh, you can also change the letter spacing, which is a problem I had in the beginning, um, because when I did change the font size and I didn't edit the line height appropriately and so on and so forth, it would just be really messy in this thing. It was one of the main problems I was having to begin with. Um, and this looks pretty clean from what I saw. So, And there, and you just change it like that, and it's there. And it's just that section, so you don't have to build multiple classes for, for you know, all the paragraphs or just every section that's going to have text. This is just in that one module on this one page, that one little section. So you don't have to worry about overflow or anything, messing up other text areas. Um, what are some other things? I don't want to show you guys. Um, so another thing it has, this is cool. I guess, I mean, mostly one of the things I wanted to ask was, I mean, is anyone having like a particular problem that seems like it might be an easy fix and it's the only way it seems to do? Yes. I actually have a question about what we did before. Sure. Um, if you want to use a font that's not in the list, mm -hmm. or import your own font, um, is that, or you just have to do CSS for that? Is there uh, a option? Which font? I mean, I think these are all Google fonts. I think that's where the library is drawing from. So it's a pretty... Good selection. What is it? There's a plugin for Google Fonts that, that gives you access to a bigger font library. Um, you could do that if you want. I personally try to stay away from plugins as much as I possibly can. Um, most of the stuff I would do for something like that, I would do it customly in the CSS and uh, just add the font that way um, <clears throat> instead of installing an entire plugin because it might slow down your website and cause other problems. Uh, I have not used that in a while. Um, so, yeah, I would say I, my personal suggestion would do it manually. This looks mostly like most of the Google fonts to me, and then some other weird stuff. Um, so, that's that. Do it, does anyone else have any other questions? I kind of just wanted to go right to the questions. Go ahead. So, like, when you create a module that you like, Mm. You can save that out for use later, like yes. you can it. Cool. But I've had like a lot saved yeah. in the library. But I've had issues where like I did it for a call to action. Yeah. Because so, I wanted it at the bottom of every page. And then so I put it at the bottom of every page, but then when I changed the text, it changed it across all across the board. So is there a way to have that not happen? Well, okay. So what he's talking about, I I did set something up because I did want to show you. So um there's another way you can save layouts here, which makes it very easy to reuse the same design over and over again instead of having to build the modules each time. So for this page, so I have this like the bands page. And so we got like four bands. Um, and then when you go to their pages, you get just this simple, you know, a photo. Like this is something if you wanted like 20 something multiple pages or something like that you want to build over and over again. Uh, so this again, up the top here, we have, you know, the text module, I think is that one, image module, more text module, and what he's mentioning here is the call to action button. Um, so in here... Well, like you could save that whole section out as a Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if this, yeah, this is like the home page thing. So if I just wanted to, for some reason, wanted to save the home page and use it again later, you could just do save to library, home page, and I'll show you that too. And so, um, so if we 
do over here. So this one is pretty basic too. Um, oh, this is the portfolio page. So then over here in projects, I think this is where I see. So if you're gonna do something with like a portfolio, you build projects to showcase things, I really don't wanna go that far into that feature because it's kind of, there's a lot going on over there, but it's, it's very useful. So here's the basic page that I just show you, the header, image, text, and then call the action button. And so the way that I built this really fast for each page was I went to load from library. And they also have built-in stuff that comes with the theme, which is pretty cool. I haven't really used any of them yet. Um, but it's definitely fun to play with. So I've got band project layout, and then we load it. Here, I'll open a new one. So we're gonna use, use the DV Builder, load from library, add from library. Oh, it's not computer stuff. No, where are they? Oh. Yeah, you deleted them. Oh, I did? Why didn't you guys say something? <laughs> oh, come on. Damn it. All right, excuse me. I knew I was gonna swear during this. That's not that bad. All right, <laughs> so here, I'll just build one really fast though. So we'll do this. And we'll use a call to action here. Um, so this call to action button has a lot of features. So So let's see if we can troubleshoot your problem. So you were saying this, the text was changing inside of the button, <coughs> sir? Or was it the... It was just so I had a whole module, I had a whole section, mm -hmm. right? And there was, there was text, there was a button, there was maybe one other thing. And, but once you save it out as, a, as its own library thing and you use it again, if you change it, it changes everywhere. Okay. So you customize it for that page, you know what I mean? I think so. Yeah, it was a global, it was a global one, and it, it just changes it all. What do you mean it was a global one? It was a, you can add it to the global library. Okay. Yeah. So is there a way so you can still add it, but not to be able to customize it without changing it everywhere? I'm not sure, actually. Okay. You mean this as a global library, or something you built yourself? No, like when you when you save one, you can you have the option of saving it as a global to the global library, whatever that. Okay, is. we'll see. It's okay. I don't, it's no, no, no. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. I'll do that one later. Is that all right? We can talk afterwards, too. We could try to get sure. into that. All right, cool. Does anybody else have any other questions? You? No? Yes. So, I run a small newspaper. Cool. It is very cool. I love it. But we're using a vigilant theme, an old, old four year old theme. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a pretty common theme throughout WordPress too. To you can schedule, I mean, <clears throat> you can make categories for each post, and I you can also do it. We, we do that. Okay. What I want is for each of these discrete blocks in Divi to only show okay. stories about a particular theme, so people would know to go to the first uh, block, block on the left to look for that. Okay. Block, cool. The next one for whatever, whatever. Yes. So that is something I have used before. Um, in this. So if you use the portfolio feature, <clears throat> you build things called projects, which are just, you know, posts or you other projects. I don't know because I'm one of the neophytes. <laughs> it's okay. It's, 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 it's one of the things in, in DV. So uh, 
So over here where it's projects, like the way that I built, uh, have all the bands come out, they're all under the category bands. And so they all pop up here in this portfolio. So if I did want to make one for separate categories, like you can make... So, so, so what I'd like is all my stories about Power Slut to go into that, um, that place, yes. but to then roll through and store the stories about Power Slut as it goes, you know, the most recent one on top and then roll yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, that's, that's a complicated thing to do. I mean, it is, it is doable. It's totally, yes, good help. I think the solution is you have a blog feature, and in the blog feature in one column, you can say which blog do you want to, but it's all, it's all. No, I understand what she's saying. Which category do you want to display in that? Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. There's. I may not be explaining. No, 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 you're, you're explaining it fine. Um. There's just, I mean, it's a different way to do that other than, like, before in WordPress, when you would do that, you would just name categories down here, you know, add a new category, right. you know, right. sports. Right, and, and we do that, but it's where they display. Exactly. Things. So, say that I was going to call this section, put it under this new category, sports. I wonder if I can do this really fast. Because it would make more sense if you saw it. Like, it's hard to just say things, and then yeah. everybody has a different imagination. So, I know what you're saying, though. Um, yeah, so like in each section here, like what you were just saying, like instead of these being different names of bands, this would be the different sections right. for each category, and, and then when you... Have, we might have multiple stories about Calvin Ball. Okay, and cool. So there's different, there. there's different ways you could do that. You could just put them there and then have them, you know, open a new page, have everything show there, have everything show in the column, where you could use... Uh, this is something where I've used this. I don't know if you guys can see this. This client, this is only a temporary project um, where the client wanted to showcase cars. And so uh, they're all different hybrids, different types of hybrids. Here they're all organized by category and this is using one of the features called tabs, um, which is a little different from the thing that I just showed you with all the bands. Um, and so up here, <clears throat> if I would hit, uh, you know, battery fuel cell, it would, it would shift all the different cars because everything in here is all cars. And then so if I just wanted to see all the cars that were based in battery, I would hit that tab there. The cars that were not battery would leave, it would yeah, shift out, and they would all that. show. Would what that I, be helpful? What I really want is for in the BMW 13, is for all those stories, all the things that we post are stories okay. about BMW 13 to go to that place, and all the stories about BMW 18 to go to the second place, and to be able to see the stories. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I mean, this also sounds like more of like a like a design project as well. Um, well, is, I, I said, is this a cheap way to get a magazine theme that I can mess with myself? I would say yes. And then also if you do use Elegant Thing, I mean, it's, it's only 89 bucks for every single theme, so if there's something that doesn't work, uh, you can try something else. This, I think, would be my, more, it would be fun to use for a newspaper. I don't know if it would be a logical thing. Well, that's um, what you're yeah, I mean, we could talk more about that after. I actually used to be a journalist in another life, and so um, I, I managed a couple blogs and stuff. So if you did want to talk about that, I, I have a lot to say on the subject. Okay. Well, so we'll see, we'll see yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, and I'll show you. I'll show you more too if you wanted to talk afterwards. It's, so. My question is really I'm sorry. I didn't start spewing. Um, the whole concept of portfolios and projects. Mm -hmm. I don't really get that, like in terms of taxonomies and how to break things out and how to set it up, and I know it's easy, but it would be really, really awesome if maybe you could take that, the band scenario and maybe create another category called venues or something and just... just yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I actually did have that up there oh, awesome. before. Uh, but just to show how it, the, how it goes. Um. Um, I mean, just to, if you guys wanted to talk to me about that after, because that's like a huge, huge thing. I don't think I have enough time. So what, what, what my question is related to that. What's really different between the project and the And post? a regular post? Okay. The post. We can get into that. All right. So, uh, so the project gets called into the portfolio. So like if I wanted to build, if I wanted to use a portfolio, I would, uh, we could do full width. This. 
So you have your portfolio right here. You can say include categories would be sports. And I forget if this one works. Is just categories of posts or not? Are we still in the same thing? No. Let me just start over again. You guys are kind of getting me all over the board. So. Okay. So this is a list of all the projects that I have built so far. And so you can see that they're all the names of the bands. I just don't want to like, I don't want to go too far and, and lose people here. So does that make sense? And then over, if you go to pages, you can see where they're all going to be called. So they're all in the bands. And so this page is just the full with portfolio. And so this is what you saw on the page where you had the four, uh, the blocks of images and the rollover and all that fancy stuff. Um, and so here, no, oh, is it other category? Hold on. <laughs> this is just kind of like a weird thing to build really fast. Yeah, so we'd put that over there. I don't know, I think I'm getting a little, I'm getting all like way off, off the board here. Okay. This is something that would not take me 15 minutes to explain. So, I mean, if you guys did want to talk to me afterward, that would be great. I don't have anything built right now. I don't think that I could show you guys right away. Can you change the picture and include the text? Yeah. Oh, would you want me to change it in the... So she could have the columns and see the text instead of the feature image. Right. That's, the, that's the difference between the post and the... Right. How many projects? I can put like a bajillion of them if you wanted to. I mean, it depends. This is, I mean, it, it depends on like... Okay, yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. No, 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 it's fine. We'll talk afterwards. Sorry. So you said you've been using this theme for a while. Yeah. You haven't used too many others. So I'm wondering if you have any ideas about how you would Uh, well, no, I mean, I've been I've been using WordPress WordPress for about eight years now. So yes, I have used other themes. I've also used Bones and other you know like pretty bare <laughs> templates, and then usually built most of my own code. Most of the clients that I got, especially at the end <clears throat> of my freelance career, just wanted really fast things that they could use themselves. And so this is why I went to this theme because it was the easiest one for me to build something quick in a month or two, have it look good, have it be responsive, which is huge. And it, it has been that way since I started using it. it. It's just been gorgeous. And there's very little mobile problems that I've had with it at, at all, if, if any. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a good thing to have in your toolkit if you get, like, a client who wants something quick, maybe has a little bit of money, want to get it done. You know, something like that would be why I would suggest for this theme. Or if you have your own project for yourself that you want to put out, stuff like that, I think this would be good for. I would not... If you wanted to go nuts and wanted to use it for like a large scale website, I mean you could if you wanted to, I would not recommend it. Um, again, like with most WordPress things, especially if you're doing it all on your own, um, you know, I, I would try to stay as simple as you can and something like this would be a good thing to use. Um, I honestly, if I was recommending, you know, to beginner intermediate developers, this would be fun to use. The code is very clean if you did want to go in there and play with it. Um, but that's, that's most of the functionality of this theme that I've found helpful. So, I don't know. Yeah. So, sir? Um, I've been using the Divi theme, and I was unable to find out how to modify the footer, both the content and the color and the height. Okay. Can you show those? Yeah. That's, um, well, that's over in the, uh, do you know, like, uh, it's in the code. It's somewhere weird, because I think I did have a problem with it to begin with. Yeah, it's over in the editor. Do you know HTML and PHP or anything? Have you been over to this section before? Uh, yeah, but I was looking for, uh, I was wondering whether Divi had any way to customize the footer. Yeah, you, I, I, the only way, 
I mean, you can change the colors, you can get rid of the social icons um, in the ones that I've used. Social icon is the only thing I could get rid of. I couldn't get rid of the Oh, let me show you guys some random. Yeah, I think that it was pretty limited. Let me see. Uh, the only way I finally solved the problem is I changed the background of white with text of white. I think if you go into the customizer. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm going for right now. So if there's, so it has, um, this is another thing I want to show you. It has this customization feature where you can just change everything at the same time if you wanted to. Um, uh, so what do you say the footer? I don't know if, I think all the times that I edited the footer, I went right into the code. But you can go in here, uh, footer elements. Yeah, show the social icons. That one's been there since the beginning. Footer menu, uh, yeah, you can change the colors, you can change the fonts. Did you just want to like add a whole bunch of new stuff in there and yeah, like did you want to name, address, phone number, and a link to uh, website built by. Yeah. And I didn't want the Divi uh, logo. Okay, so there is a plugin by Divi, which is a child team plugin. Um, that's that's my solution. And that works if you want to use the child team and it gives you the you know, you don't have to go to the PHP to change. Yeah, I mean, I haven't I haven't used plugins because I usually just go into the code and change it manually. Yeah. So I mean, what I what I personally would do, I wouldn't build maybe, I would build a section that would maybe have three columns, keep that on the bottom, you know, make like a template layout with, you know, maybe something just have like a universal header or something if you wanted to. Have a footer at the bottom, and make sure that it's on this, the bottom of every page you use, and so well, that way you can put it in. Or you can, I mean, you could. Well, I think the only way that I went in, like, his word says, like, I had to go into the code to change all that stuff and then add my own. Um, or the right thing is to do the child thing. What is it? You should do a child thing instead of changing the base code. I mean, I can do whatever I want. And that was what I decided to do because it was just for my uh, personal portfolio. And all I really wanted to do, I think, was change the name and stuff. Um, so, I mean, that's the beauty of this. You can do it any way you wanted to. I, again, don't really <clears throat> trust most plugins. Uh, I try to stay away them as much as I possibly can because most of the sites that I have built uh, in the past couple of years are just small little things like stuff on my portfolio and things like that. Um, so, I mean, that's why I, there's no, nothing really in the theme itself that I found that is very helpful, not malfunctioning, that to help the footer. And that definitely was one of the issues I've had since day one. So, you have my controls on this? But there's ways you could change it, sir. Uh, first off, I echo your sentiments on plugins. <laughs> Thank you. I have not, although I have been very afraid of it. Uh -huh. um, so, we've been afraid of it, and we've have you have you have you done it yet? Have you? We found like uh, the in one the Divi theme. I think it was like two point three to two point four. Yeah. Two to two to three. Trash everything. Oh, so broke everything. Converted yeah. it back to like a default theme, including the logo. Okay. And Okay. No, I mean, I'm not surprised by that at all. And like what I said in the beginning, um, you know, I've only been using the most upgraded one for like a week or two um, where there has been some changes. But I mean, I put it on, a, like, I just put it somewhere. I don't think I had Divi on this website. <laughs> I think I just, I didn't have anything. I just had WordPress. I installed Divi. I was afraid to install Divi on something where I already had Divi because I was afraid of that happening because... I mean, again, I'm not surprised. I can totally see something like that happening. Um, what he just said was updating, updating the theme caused them problems. How long ago was that? Was that like back in the spring or something? Uh, it was a major, the major problem. The major up. Spring, but just recently we did a small point upgrade. And again, we're using a child theme. 
Yeah. Was it that big of a deal to fix, or...? Uh, no. Yeah. But it's just still a pain. Yeah. I mean, that's like a WordPress problem, you know? The few ones we have. But that's definitely something. But no, I haven't, I haven't, haven't, haven't had to deal with that head-on yet, but I'm probably going to down the line, so that's good to know. So... Cool. Um... I got, like, one, one more question, two more questions. One more question? Five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. I have to do the WordPress, and I'm curious about the plugins on the side menu on the dashboard. Are mm -hmm. those built in plugins that come that are part yes. of the Divi theme, or are you talking about plugins that you might acquire outside? These are all plugins that come with the theme. Every okay, single, the yeah, you everything you see here is from the theme. I think the only plugin I have in this, which I think now they have something built in, it's like the ultimate coming soon page or something, because I didn't want this site live. Uh, live and then um, so I just put like that simple plugin in um, but these are all things that do come with the theme um, you know most of them are pretty familiar uh, something like the projects is the thing that I um, you know I could maybe go into later on you can look at it uh, which is just like it's pretty much like a, a fancy way to post without putting it in the blog and dealing with all that stuff or users or it's it, it's it's a lot that needs its own it probably just has plugins. like a kismet so and all the. Like the <laughs> well, these are all the ones that come with WordPress. Okay, but so you don't find them. Uh, yeah, I disable comments, kismet, hello Dolly, which everyone loves, uh, <laughs> and then ultimate coming soon page. Yeah. So I mean, these aren't. Usually, I'll put disable comments in, uh, but I think I've been able to do that on my own, but with customizing the code on my own, because um, that one can be kind of buggy sometimes. That one's actually worked pretty well, but yeah, I mean, most of the plugins I've used, you know, could be helpful for some things, but I would always run into some kind of problem down the line. Um, you know, it's just like, in a way it would be like mixing like too many different colors of paint together, and you just get this weird brown, it doesn't really help anybody. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but... It's, it's for me using WordPress. It was you know as simple as possible because most of the projects I had, you know, were had to be out fast, and you know I would just you know give my babies away and just be like, here, take this. You paid me. Do what you want with it now. And I didn't want the clients having to call me and be like, how do I do all this? It's like you know you can build an email. So and one more. Oh, sure. Yeah, so this is, oh, this is cool. Have you seen this before? Is that what you were asking? Okay, so this, um... No, uh, it's not. I would, if they did do that, that would be awesome. Um, no, it's not there. No, that was the one that I just showed. The, there was the customizer one, and that was where the footer options were just like changing the color and the font and the and getting rid of the social icons. This is a different section. If you did want to upload like your own logo, if you wanted to upload the favicon, um, if you wanted to put like defaults in for your social media, if you wanted like social media icons all over the place, crazy stuff like that, um, this is where you would do it. Um, instead of having to go into the code and upload the lo logo, you have to do it in here which is the same in the first ones that I used. Um, I do not think that there is customization for the footer. You can hide the footer in here. What is the other one? There's customization mm -hmm. for the footer in there. I've never found it. Yeah, I, don't, I, think, I think there's something where you, like, uh, there is something you can do, but it's not. It's nothing with design. It's, it's, it's something else. But, Oh yeah. They will then you would go uh I mean that works the way that well, that they always work. Yeah. So do you mind maybe staying and talking to people outside? Sure. When, and I'd be happy to answer some questions on everything else though. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just a lot of so, very involved. Yeah. So I mean, if you guys, I'm gonna go outside. If you can, like, I'll be out there maybe out like there. five minutes. If you guys wanted to sit down, we could look at this a little bit more. Um, yeah, because there's there's some pretty heavy questions, but they're all 
very good. And we can see what we can do. So if people have more questions on Divi, we can go out here. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions, too, if you have any. And um, we're going to take a break.